What's up, it's Marco, Sage Stalker, and today I'll be running through my 26-man roster for the 2022 World Cup for the U.S. Men's National Team. And this is as of September 30th, so things are still liable to change. We still have a month before the tournament, and regarding form, especially in the striker position, and, you know, we could still see a player emerge. It could still happen. Maybe one of our U20 guys will just have a great run of games, and she's like, okay, we probably should put them in the team, or maybe we'll get a dual national commit, and that'll change up our squad, but after those last September games, I think we know enough about this team that I feel good about putting together this 26-man roster. Now, I'm going to be going through one at a time in positions. If you want the full roster, it's in the description below, and just right now, let's get into it. In goal, and starting in goal, we have Matt Turner. Just too good of a shot stopper to leave off this team, and I don't believe that we have anybody good enough with their feet to justify replacing Matt Turner in the starting lineup. I think the only thing I can say about Matt Turner is when he's in goal, I feel confident. I feel good about our chances to keep a clean sheet. And even if a team is on a break on a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, I just feel safe with having Matt Turner in, in goal. And he's just too good of a player to leave out of the starting lineup right now. And he needs to be our starter. As our first backup off the bench, I've got Ethan Horvath. He's been a very good backup in his time with the national team. We all remember the Nations League campaign, and now he's finally getting consistent playing time at Luton Town. And I think that he's our number two. I trust him to come off the bench. He is pretty decent with his feet if it does come to a situation where Matt Tartar's getting so pressed that it becomes an issue. And I think Horvath is everything that we'd want in a backup goalkeeper, so I'd have him in the team. And lastly, for our last goalkeeper position, I'm going with Gabriel Sonina. That's a bit of a controversial choice, but it's third choice goalkeeper. This position's pointless. They're not going to see the field. If we had an injury prone goalkeeper in the team, I would be more careful with this spot. But we're not going to be playing in freezing conditions. I don't think Matt Turner's going to be getting frostbite again. So, honestly, this position is so meaningless that if he was healthy, I would be considering Brad Guzan for this spot, just for the experience that he'd be bringing into the team and having another veteran presence in the locker room. But since he's not, I'd rather get Gabriel Salonina in. Honestly, I don't think the gap between him and, let's say, a Sean Johnson is very big. He might even already be better than him. I don't think he is, but I would listen to that argument. And I think getting Salonina this experience will be really valuable because he could easily be a very good player. He's one of the best players in the world in his birth year at the moment. We'll have to see if he ends up staying like that as more people start to play, but I think Slonina is too much of a can't-miss prospect to take him for granted, and I would get him into this team. So that means no Sean Johnson and, more controversially, no Zach Steffen. Um, with Johnson, it's just I'd pick Ethan Horvath over him. I don't think that's that controversial. With that, Zach Steffen, I think he's too injury-prone to be a backup. Um, he just ends up getting hurt a lot, and I really, for a backup, like, if somebody goes down, our backup might have to be ready to jump in, and I, I don't think Steffen's going to be ready, so I can't really have him on the team, and his play on the field has probably regressed since like let's say 2020 he looked very bad for man city last year he hasn't lit middlesbrough on fire he might not even be starting for them come the world cup and i don't think he can be in the team so for goalkeeper i'm going with matt turner as a starter then ethan horvath and gabriel slanina at center back, I think I change up this position the most on the actual roster, and it might even be different opinions from like a good amount of the community, but I think I can justify them pretty well. At center back, well, first is Chris Richards. I think that's just about guaranteed, even if he's not playing the most at Crystal Palace, and that can change in October, but he's too complete, great on the ball, great athletically, great defensive instincts. He's everything you want out of a center back, and he could very easily become a Champions League player in the future. Well, I guess he already was one, but a starting Champions League player in the future. And he needs to be in this team, and he needs to be starting. Um, for his partner, though, I think there are two choices for me. I think I'm leaning towards going with Cameron Carter-Vickers. He hasn't been in the national team too much, but he's been in camps enough that I trust that he's good, he's familiar with the squad, and he's just been a very reliable center back. He's been great in Scotland, 
I think the best center back in Scotland since Virgil van Dijk is not a controversial take. He's been amazing for Celtic. He's stepped into the Champions League pretty well. I mean, they got beat by Real Madrid, but Cameron Carter-Vickers did not look like he didn't belong on the field. And he's a good athletic player, comfortable on the ball. Not as good as Richards, certainly not as good as Brooks, but I trust him enough. And he has played very well in the championship. Wales, they're a good team, but let's look at their attack. Aside from Gareth Bale, Brennan Johnson just got promoted. Like, a low-level Premier League player. Same with Daniel James. He was with Manchester United, but I think low-level Premier League is where you'd say Kiefer Moore, high championship, low, uh, low Premier League. That's Cameron Carter-Vickers' level, and he's done well at that level. And I think that's why I would start him, because that Wales game, that's going to be the make-or-break game probably. And I think he's good enough that he can do a job in that tough situation and help win us the game. Next, we have John Brooks, and he would be in this team even if he was washed, which he isn't. I just bring him in for his World Cup experience and his leadership that he's shown on the field. And I don't think we've seen that leadership that he has from a lot of this team. And I think a good portion of this team's decline in play has been because we dropped John Brooks from this team. I would want to have him in the squad strictly as a leader, but he's more than that. He's great with the ball at his feet. Uh, just our best ball-playing center back by far, even better than Chris Richards. I think he's very dominant in the air and good at stepping up and stopping opponents. And I think the desire is 100% there. I think one of Brooks's problems was that he kind of coasted through games he didn't see as important. If you go back to uh, the Nations League window, you'll see like we had a friendly. He played pretty bad in that. Then the Nations League started. Good game against Honduras, good game against Mexico. And then, you know, we got to World Cup qualifying. Oh, it's a, just a random team. Okay, he'll coast through the game. And that is a problem. And that's a problem why I don't really have him as a starter. But we're going to be at the World Cup. He's going to be giving it his 100%. And just with the things that I've seen from him, I really like him as a leader. I want him in the squad no matter what. Next, Walker Zerman. I see him as a decent backup option who can do a, good, a job against all right opposition. I don't think he should be starting in this World Cup. He's going to be having to go up against a, a Harry Kane against England, some really good strikers in Iran, and I don't think he has the athleticism to deal with a Daniel James or a Brennan Johnson. And by the way, John Brooks had a great game against Wales last time we played them, and that was like two years ago by the start of the World Cup. I think he'll be fine. Um, but anyway, with Walker Zerman, I don't trust his ability on the ball he can pick out a pass when given time but if we are being pressured which i think we will be he's going to be in trouble and i think he will be giving the ball away a lot and that will be bad now that being said he's got some positive traits i think he's a solid like high floor option with a lot of the other players i wouldn't have them in the team because they can make some big mistakes that I think could cost our squad. If Walker Zimmerman does not try to play all the back, I don't think he's going to make any unforced errors. His ability to stop players who are just better than him, I don't think it's as good. But I think as that fourth center back, I'm fine with taking a reliable option in Walker Zimmerman. And something to keep in mind about this roster is that it's a 26-man team. And typically, big tournament teams are 23-man squad, which gives you uh, three goalkeepers and 20 outfield players. That would be ideally two backup goalkeepers and one backup at every single position, and I really think that's fine. I don't think we need that 24th, 25th, and 26th man, but we have it. So why not use it to either bring some good experience into the team or get somebody that World Cup experience that might help them along the future? And I think I'm going to use the center back spot to bring somebody who is experienced and I think can help the team win some games, and that's Tim Ream. Tim Ream has been a very experienced center back, a huge career in England, um, just one of the best championship center backs that we've seen recently, and that seems like a backhanded compliment, but Wales is a very heavy, a championship heavy team, and I think he could do a job against them, but I think the athleticism of a Brennan Johnson and Daniel James is too much for me to risk putting Tim Ream on the field. So I wouldn't have him start, and I really wasn't disappointed when we dropped him, and 
while I do think he deserved a look, I would have called him up. I wouldn't really have him in our 23-man team. And just because he's playing in the Premier League doesn't make him automatically a great player. Like, we've seen that with Indiana Vasilev and, like, players like that. Uh, Kyle Scott, I believe. Like, just because they're in the Premier League doesn't mean anything. Now, you obviously want to go to the Premier League, but just because you're getting a look doesn't mean you're automatically a great player. But that being said, Reem has a good amount of experience. I want him in the team as a veteran. He can even provide emergency cover at left back. And when I say emergency, I mean emergency, but we have very little left-footed players. Again, I don't rate him enough to start, but I think having his experience in the team will lead to success. And for some snubs from the team, um, I'm really disappointed not to have Mark McKenzie. I really like him as a player. I'm a big Philadelphia Union fan, and I, it sucks to not have him in the team. He has a great athleticism, really good on the ball. Like, all the intangibles, everything that you can't teach to a center back, he has. But he just has too many mistakes in him. And especially as a backup who might have to come in if somebody gets hurt, I, I don't really trust him. And that's why well, I can't really have him in the team. Same with Eric Palmer Brown. I just, I don't know. I He's probably better than, like, a Zimmerman and a Reem. But... Just at this point, I haven't seen him enough in the national team. I feel like he will struggle to adapt. So I don't want to risk putting him into the squad. And uh, Aaron Long should be nowhere near the team. I'm not going to dunk on him any more than I have to. On to fullback. Starting off, we got Serginho Dest, who's a Champions League level attacking right back and one of the players in our team to build around. He's simply too talented to leave off the field, even with some defensive issues. Though I would argue that it's not really that bad on this team, but at a Champions League level, they can show up. And he's just too good of a player to leave off. He's probably our backup left back at the moment, and is obviously in the team, even if he's not playing at Milan to start things off. Then we got Jedi Robinson, our only competent left back, and thankfully he's a very good player. A great athlete, he's been getting a lot better at bombing forward. I think he's pretty inconsistent with his attacking abilities, but if he's good, he's going to be good, and someone to keep an eye on, who, if he gets hurt, we are in deep trouble. Next, we got Joe Scally, probably a more complete player than Serginho Dest, though he lacks the amazing offensive abilities, that I, so I wouldn't put him into the team, but proving to be a very solid defensive player, playing a lot in the Bundesliga, keeping out some very talented players behind him, and I trust him to do, do well. If he plays a right back, I trust him to go in, do a job, get forward well, defend well, and I think he's our best backup at that right back position and left back too, technically, because I'd be sliding Dest over to the left should he get hurt. And for our last spot, I'm giving it to DeAndre Yedlin. He can come in during emergencies, but I think he's more here for the experience he brings. Just another veteran who's experienced the World Cup before, him alongside John Brooks. I want to have just experienced players in the team to help these young guys adapt to a really tough environment and hey he's got a lot of pace as well like it's not that he can't do a job it's just more that I don't trust him too much but he's more there as a veteran to help the squad um for players who didn't make it up uh, Reggie Cannon just hasn't looked good enough offensively he's been a black hole going forward and defensively he hasn't been solid enough for me to I think you could make an argument that he's better than DeAndre Yedlin but with the experience that Yedlin has, with just being able to add another veteran to the team, I would want to have Yedlin in the squad over him. I was seriously considering Jonathan Gomez to bring in as like a 24, 25, 26 spot, but I'd rather try to win and try to just do well in this World Cup rather than just get somebody experience. And he'll have a lot of experience playing in the U20 World Cup, so I don't feel bad about leaving him off. And for actual backup left backs, uh, Sam Vines and George Bello, just not good enough. Hopefully Bello will be able to improve pretty soon. But uh, even as left-footed players who would definitely help our system a lot more, I can't justify On to midfielders, and I'd be playing a 4-2-3-1. So these are the players that would be the two in that formation, the deeper midfielders. Maybe the more defensive ones, but at least the ones who are going to be playing deeper. Uh, first, we have Tyler Adams, who has excelled in this position for Leeds under Jesse March recently. And even if we were playing with a 4-3-3 like we do under Greg Berhalter, he's our only option as the 6. But uh, I really like him as the 2, as one of those dual 8s or dual 6s in that formation. 
and I trust that he'll have a good performance if we switch our tactics and play him in his best position. If not, I'll be hoping for him to do well. He's proven that he can do it, but he's pretty inconsistent when he plays as a lone six. So hopefully we can change his formation, get him some help at that spot, and I think if we do, he'll look very good this tournament. Next we have Weston McKinney, and he's just coming back from an injury, and he has to get back to his best form to ensure a starting spot over Yunus Musa, because Yunus Musa looked very missed this last window. But if McKinney's at his best, I think he might be our best player. His highs are really high, he's a huge goal threat, he's good at build-up, he can a very good defensive player as well. Like He has everything you want out of a box-to-box -box player when he's at his best, but if he's not at his best, I don't know if we can start him. It's going to be a good battle to watch, and I think it's going to end up being McKinney who starts, but I don't think he's a locked-in starter anymore. Then we have Yunus Musa, speaking of him, just immensely talented player, like hugely technical on the ball, helps us in build-up so much. Um, He's a lot more athletic than I initially realized because he came to the team as like a 17-year-old, I'm pretty sure, or an 18-year-old, and you're just watching him at first, and you're like, oh, okay, well, he's more of a technical player, but it's like, no, he was just that young, and he shouldn't have been, he was just that young, he somehow broke into the team when he really shouldn't have, and he showed his ability greatly, and, and he's everything you want out of a player, I think that he might be. He's had an argument to be our most talented player. I think it's Gio Reyna, but you could make an argument that it's Musa. But that being said, he's very young. And I think he has some uh, inexperience that shows at times. I think he can give the ball away in pretty crucial positions that will be punished by a good team. And because of that, I don't know if he ends up starting over Weston McKinney. But if he can win it, I'm expecting him to do very well. Then we got Luca De La Tour. I think he's a bit off from the rest of the starters, but he can provide a good, crucial spark off the bench. A very creative player who can really just take control of a game. And if we're down or tied and really need a goal, I'd love to bring on Luca De La Tour to see him make something happen. Um, in addition to that, he's our only like attacking left-footed player, and I think that there's an argument to be made that if Jedi Robinson gets injured, I'd play Luca De La Tour as a left wing back just to help balance the team, help us get a one player out wide who can provide some crossing, who's a good player, allow Pulsic to cut in from that right-hand side. Um, it's just a pet idea I've had for a long time, but I think it could work. It's not going to happen, but something to keep in your mind. Uh, then we've got Kellen Acosta, another player who I wouldn't want starting, but he has a specific role in mind where he can come off the bench late in the game and help seal up a win. Like, it's not much... But especially with how big the squad is, I'm comfortable having a cost to play that role. And hey, he can hit a dead ball pretty well. He could be a decent guy on corners if we're not doing anything great. Especially if it's like a one nothing game, he'd come on, take a corner. Like we'd probably be going for set pieces at that point. Like I, I think we should have a cost in the squad. And in addition to that, I've really liked him as a leader. Similar to John Brooks, him and I think Weston McKinney are the only players I've seen truly be like an on the field leader like you look at them and you're just like man this guy he, the team is rallying around him and I want a player like that in the team and I think Acosta is pretty crucial for us and now for our second 24 25 26th man on the team I'm going to go with James Sands uh, he's shown a lot of improvement since joining Rangers I mean a lot he's looked like a completely improved player and should Tyler Adams get injured I think I would rather have James Sands become a starter at a six position should we be using a six rather than starting Acosta. I still like Acosta's role, but he can't be a starter for us. And in addition, James Sands can provide cover as a center back, especially in a back three. I mentioned we might have to switch to a left wing back should Jedi get injured. And I think that James Sands does very well in a back three. In addition, he's looked good in a back uh, four for Rangers. And... I think with his versatility as well as his quality and not for nothing his potential means that he'd be a valuable member of the team. That means a couple of players miss out from the squad. I think the one I feel the worst about is John Luca Busio. I think he's probably the closest to the team and I really feel bad for leaving him out, but we're very talented at that like midfield position 
and I don't think I can have him break into the team. It sucks because I really like him as a player, and I think he's going to be very good, but I don't think I can justify that. Uh, Johnny Cardoso is pretty close as well, but I don't think he provides the versatility of a James Sands or the specific role and leadership of Acosta. And really, when they both played in the same game, I've liked Acosta a bit more, which is something I didn't think I'd uh, say coming into the game, but especially in that friendly against Bosnia, I actually liked Acosta more than Johnny that game. And then Christian Roldan is nowhere near the team. And if Burhalter has such a bad locker room that he feels the need to call up this player specifically to bring up morale, um, that's just a sign of incompetence of the coach. Next, I'm going to be talking about the three of the 4-2-3-1, the more attacking midfielders and wingers. And first, you got Christian Pulisic. Great on the left wing. Everybody's going to have their eyes on him. Even if he's in bad form with Chelsea, I think he's going to come in and start. Just such a good player who we need to have in the team, a player to build around. He's proven himself at the, in the Champions League. He had a great game against Real Madrid before. And again, even if he's not in form, which he might be in better form, Graham Potter might really like him. Like, he has to start. Then you got Tim Weah, dynamic attacker on the right, huge goal threat, has shown a ton of end product in this team. Probably our only player who looks better for us than he does for his club. Just Overall, really good player, can provide good crossing from that right-hand side, can provide width if we want to have Sergio Dest go more inside, which we like to do a lot. And I just think everything points to Tim Weah probably being a starter for us, and I'm looking forward to watching this World Cup. Then we got Gio Reyna, and Reyna is a bit tough to talk about because I think he's our best player in terms of pure talent. Just in terms of ceiling as a player, he could become world-class eventually. But... We're seeing the injury record right now. Forget being able to go 90 minutes. I'm not sure if he'll be able to go 60 minutes come this World Cup. And it might be have a good it might be a good idea to have him as a super sub and have him come off the bench because I I'm not sure if he's going to be ready to play. But that being said, if he's 100 percent and he's ready to go, he's too talented to leave out of the starting lineup. Then another option at the 10, we got Brendan Aronson, uh, both wings as well as he could play, but. He took to the Premier League even better than I thought he would. He's looked very good under Jesse March for Leeds, and honestly, he's been better than Pulisic this year. He's looked very good in that 10 position, and I think there's a big argument to start him either at that 10 or on the right wing, and we'll have to see how things pan out, but Brent Aronson's looking very good. And lastly, for the last of that 24 to 26 spots, I'm going to be going with Malik Tillman. I don't think he'll be playing this tournament, but... He's been very good for Rangers this year. He's looked good in Champions League qualification. He's played in the Champions League. He comes from a high-level Bayern Munich team. And he's got U.S. Men's National Team starter potential. And in addition, I think in this role, I think he's probably the best remaining player. He can do a job on the wing. He can do a job at, as a 10, even deeper in the midfield, maybe as a false 9. I think there's a lot of talent in Malik Tillman. And I'd want to have him in the squad because of that. I think he's a good enough player that we can bring into the team. That means Paul Ariola and Jordan Morris miss out. Um, they're just not good enough. Ariola was never good enough, and Jordan Morris didn't recover from his injury. Um, I feel a bit bad for Morris because he probably would have been our better players and one of our better players in 2018, but it's what it is. Last but not least, we got strikers. Up top, I'm going to be going with Josh Sargent as my current starter. I've talked about this a bit before, but just to recap, he's been dominating in the championship, and besides uh, Ben Davies, Wales is a championship-level defense, and I think that Wales game is going to be our make-or-break game this tournament. So I want him in the team because he can score against those opposition, and I think that's the most important thing. And in addition, he provides the pressing and combining ability that modern strikers need, and while Stryker isn't as good as our other positions, I think Josh Sharch can do a job, and I think he'll be pretty good this tournament. Then, Jordan P. Falk. He's been killing it in the Bundesliga, becoming a much more of a complete, well-rounded striker. Uh, just great goal-scoring ability. Probably our best striker, like, altogether. But I think with the team that we have, we're going to want to have Pulisic cutting on the inside. I don't think our crossing is consistent enough that P. Falk can be at his best. But he can be such a good change of pace off the bench if a game is just in a deadlock or we really need a goal. I would want to have him in the team. I might even start him against Iran. But um, I think Sargent is more well-rounded, so I'd start him 
but Jordan P. Falk should definitely be in the squad. And lastly, I'm going with Haji Wright as our last striker. Uh, very technical, good chemistry with the team already, and he's been scoring goals everywhere he goes. And while he doesn't use his height as well as a Jordan P. Falk or a D- Daryl DK, like he's not that type of player, I his height is still there, and we have to keep that in mind because we just kick the ball forward more often than we like to admit. And I think that he's a very well-rounded striker as well. Good hold-up play, can put the ball in the back of the net, can combine with the players in the midfield. Like, I think he's a very like-for-like backup for Josh Sargent, and I'd like to have him in the team. Unfortunately, that pushes Hayes Ferrer out of the squad, but he's not impressed at striker at all. Even in the game where he scored four goals against a semi-pro team, he did not look good. I don't think he'd score at the World Cup, and because of that, I He's not a striker at this level. And I think I prefer Aronson and Reyna at the 10, and Tillman can cover more positions. So I would leave Hayes Ferreira out of the squad, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have potential. I think he will be a very good player in the future, but he's not ready yet. And similarly with Ricardo Pepe, he should be with the U20 team. He's got loads of potential, but so does Quinn Sullivan. So does Kevin Paradis. So does... Uh, Diego Luna like he should be with the U20 squad he, he'll be a great player I'm confident in that but he's not ready for this level so for the total squad I've got Matt Turner in goal followed by Ethan Horvath and Gabriel Sonina at center back we've got Chris Richards Cameron Carter Vickers John Brooks Walker Zerman and Tim Ream at fullback we've got Serginio Dest Jedi Robinson Joe Scally and DeAndre Yedlin at more deeper defensive midfielders you've got Tyler Adams West McKinney Yannis Musa Luca De La Torre Kellen Acosta and James Sands and more offensive-minded midfielders and wingers, we've got Christian Pulisic, Tim Weah, Gio Reyna, Brendan Aronson, and Malik Tillman. And up top, we've got Josh Sargent, Jordan P. Falk, and Hachi Wright. You know, I probably could have put in more young players and just completely prepared for the 2026 tournament, but we don't know if we're going to be ready for that tournament. We don't know if anybody's going to be healthy for them. We don't know if players will just completely drop off. This World Cup is important. We qualified for a World Cup, there's only one every four years, and I think we have to at least give it our best shot and try to win it, try to make something happen. And if we bring a squad like this, I think that we can make something happen. We can definitely get out of the group. You know, there's a possibility that we can make some noise. I mean, sure, it's unlikely, but there are reasons to be optimistic. This team is the best we've ever been in terms of quality, and I think there's reason to be optimistic. There's a lot of very good players in the team, and if we can get the best out of them, I think anything's possible. So yeah, that's all I've talked about. It's going to be really fun to watch this World Cup come November. I'm hoping the real roster is pretty similar to this, though who knows what it'll be. And yeah, that's all I've talked about. See ya.